So this is the physical science lesson video for section 10.4 and this is the last section of the year. I'm so excited. Um, these videos have taken a long time. Uh, so hopefully they're helping you. And as always, if you want my videos in one spot, just subscribe to my channel and you'll have them for the whole year. So we're going to talk more about nuclear chemistry. And so in this video, we're going to talk about the difference in fission and fusion. So nuclear energy is energy released by nuclear reactions. So we don't like nuclear reactions because we don't want the hazardous radioactivity. We don't want our bodies to be damaged by that radiation. But we love nuclear reactions because they provide us with a lot of energy, which we need. So the strong nuclear force is the attractive force that binds the protons and neutrons together in the nucleus. We talked about this back in the, physical, uh, the physics part of physical science. Um, that strong nuclear force, that's the only reason these will stay together. That uh, strong nuclear force, though, only acts over very short distances. So the problem is, eventually, if the nucleus gets too big, the strong nuclear force is just overwhelmed, and it can't hold it together anymore. So over short distances, the strong nuclear force is much greater than the electric forces among the protons. Because remember, two protons would normally repel. So over short distances, the strong nuclear force will overcome that repulsion and keep them together. So what happens when it's not going to hold it together anymore? Well, the greater the number of protons in the nucleus, the greater that repulsion or the electric force uh, starts. And so those protons, they want to repel one another. They don't want to be held together anymore. So all nuclei with more than 83 protons are radioactive. Okay, so once you get to element number 83 on the periodic table, everything past that is radioactive. Okay, and element 83 right here is bismuth. So bismuth is our last non-radioactive um, element. Now there are some isotopes, I do want to point this out, there are some isotopes of elements with less than 84 or 83 and below that are radioactive, but just any nucleus with more than 83 protons, all the isotopes are radioactive. So let me do clarify that part. So fission versus fusion. Fission is the splitting of an atomic nucleus into two smaller parts. In nuclear fission, tremendous amounts of energy can be produced from very small amounts of mass. Okay, so we talked about examples of fission in like the alpha, beta, gamma video. Okay, like in an alpha uh, radiation or alpha decay, the nucleus releases an alpha particle. So it loses two protons and two neutrons, making a smaller nucleus uh, for the atom to end with. Okay, and so here's an example. Um, where we have uh, neutrons that are released. So here's a uh, fission. So we have a uranium atom right here. And then we have a neutron that's absorbed by the uranium. And then it ends up splitting into two different atoms, a krypton and a barium. Okay, because that atom, the nucleus is just too large to be stable. So fusion on the other hand, of course, fission is splitting. So fusion will be combining. So fusion is a process in which the nuclei of two atoms combine to form a larger nucleus. So in other words, we'd be talking about smaller particles here. As in fission, during fusion, a small fraction of the reactant mass is converted into energy. And that's what we want. We want to use that energy. The sun and other stars are powered by fusion of hydrogen into helium. So two hydrogens come together and they make a helium atom. And so here's just an example. It happens real fast. You just got to watch the two collide. And then we have a larger nucleus that leaves. And in this case, we still have another particle that leaves too. Plasma. Fusion requires extremely high temperatures. Okay, so I said the sun and other stars are powered by fusion. So we got really high temperatures. Plasma is the state of matter in which atoms have been stripped of their electrons. So plasma is when the temperatures are so high that the electrons release from the atoms, and so you're left with positive ions and electrons. We talked about plasmas briefly um, when we talked about the states of matter. So, section assessment, our last one for the year. Oh my gosh. Under what conditions does the strong nuclear force overcome the repulsive effect of the electric forces in the nucleus? Remember, the strong nuclear force is best over short distances. Over short distances. Or you can say if it has 83 or less protons, either answer would be fine. Number two, what property of fission makes it a useful reaction? Well, it produces a lot of energy. It produces a lot of energy. Number three, what particles are affected by strong nuclear forces? Well, remember, the strong nuclear forces hold the protons and neutrons together. So 
So the particles affected would be the protons and the neutrons. And then number four, how does the products, that should say how do, surprise, surprise, I have another typo. How do the products of a fusion reaction differ from the products of a fission reaction? Well, remember, fusion is two small nuclei combining to form a larger nucleus. Fission is a large nucleus splitting into smaller nuclei. Okay, so fusion is small to big. Fission is big to small. That's the easiest way to say it. All right. And so, oh my gosh, I didn't think I'd ever get to this point, but that is it. All right, so hopefully now you know a little bit more about fission and fusion. Feel free to go back and watch any of the videos you need to to get ready for any tests, especially the milestones. So thank you for watching.